many aviation industry practitioners, uh, supporters, and basically fans as myself, uh, has gathered together today to uh, discuss discuss the latest technological trends and solutions in the airlines and passenger market. I do hope that you're gonna enjoy this two days event. Uh, it was a fantastic job put together by the team preparing this conference, and I really hope that you're gonna enjoy yourself. Uh, I just want to, you know, briefly introduce the idea of the Aviation Hub, uh, Aviation Hub Pomerania. Uh, it was established by uh, funding partners coming from our region, from Pomorsky Voivodeship. Uh, so we have the companies, we have the representative of the business world, so we have Boeing and Smart for Aviation. Uh, we have the, also the uh, participation of the public sector, so we have the Gdańsk Clay Wawensa Airport being this partly public, partly private, partly business uh, member of the uh, founding group. And we have two agencies supporting development, economic development of the, in the region. So we have Invest GDA, the agency from Gdańsk, uh, supporting investors, supporting companies uh, locally, and we have Invest in Pomerania. So we are investment promotion agency responsible for the uh, for the whole region, for the whole, uh, region of Pomerania, the region of Pomorsky Voivodeship, we are supporting foreign investors in starting their uh, activities uh, here uh, regionally. Uh, and the idea behind the aviation hub was to uh, create a regional cluster of aviation-related companies in Pomerania. Uh, so we wanted to bring together the market specialist uh, to Grow the network of the people who are uh, present in the in the market, who are taking, uh, who are doing business in this field. Uh, so we are aiming at also increasing through this networking. We are aiming at increasing the volume of aviation-related services and products developed in the region. This is our ultimate goal. So we want to also increase cooperation between academia and market. Uh, so just to boost innovation and integration of the aviation industry solutions. Uh, we all would, lost, would love to also boost the knowledge sharing. So we know that the companies, the uh, academia in our region, they can uh, benefit mutually from sharing the knowledge, sharing experience and their expertise. Uh, and for the benefit, of course, of the, for the development of the whole sector. Uh, another goal is to connect modern technologies with the aviation industry customers. And by the end of the day, it's also about the promoting high quality aviation products and services created in Pomerania. Uh, I would love to, you know, introduce briefly our partners. As I mentioned, we have the representative of the business world. So the company Bank and Smart for Aviation. So Bank in Gdańsk develop software to assist pilots and aircrew, but also airport service teams, ground staff, administration staff, mechanics, and air traffic controllers. There are two main areas of activities of Bank in Gdańsk. One of them uh, deals with, nav with the navigation data, while the other uh, deals with the software tools and products for customers. At Bank Gdańsk, aviation specialists train the personnel, especially technicians without aviation education. Uh, and help them gain a perspective of a pilot or an airline manager. In return, software specialists show the latest achievement and solutions and explain how they use navigation data to plan flights or carry out physical maintenance of aircraft. Smart for Aviation uh, presented the market for 20 years, a uh, software provider for the aviation industry. Uh, offers one of the top products in the class, thanks to the dozens of product deployments in airlines around the world. Uh, Smart for Aviation Smart Load application helps significantly reduce fuel consumption costs and at the same time ensures compliance with the wave and balance limits. Uh, our partner, uh, Gdańsk International Airport, uh, I think he, all, we, are all, we all know that this is one of the top uh, airports in Poland currently. Uh, they serve more than 5 million uh, passengers in 2019, which was a record-breaking year for the airport. And the uh, increase in traffic uh, provides 
an incentive for the airport to show to seek more effective and automated solutions just to manage the increased traffic. Um, the airport, by uh, servicing more than 5 million passengers last year, uh, become one, one of the most prominent airports in the Baltic Sea uh, region, and it all maintains the position in the top three airports in Poland for a couple of last years. Invest GDA, as mentioned, as I mentioned, it's a uh, ag local agency responsible for the city of Gdańsk for the economic development. They are uh, actively uh, engaged in the land development, so they are they were responsible for cre creation of the two industrial zones, one uh, Maszynowa Park and the other one, which is called Pomorski, uh, Pomerania Center of Investment in the Vin City of Port of Gdańsk. Uh, and invest in Pomerania, uh, fin the final founding partner of the Aviation Hub. We are were established in 2011 uh, with the goal to bring foreign direct investment to the region and which means that to bring the jobs. So our more major focus is to support companies in retaining jobs in our region and to create new, uh, also to create new jobs in our region. And after this introduction of our of the funding part of Salvation Hub, I would love to also introduce our next two speakers. Uh, so to kickstart the conference, uh, we bring you two industry veterans, uh, Rafał Stępnowski, CEO of Boeing Poland and Director of Government Affairs for Boeing International. Uh, Rafał has been in the aviation industry since 1993 and currently manages a highly successful and multidisciplinary Boeing unit of over 700 professionals located in Gdańsk and Rzeszów. Focus on aviation, navigation uh, uh, data analytics, software development, research and engineering, including being paying Avionex. It is the biggest single bank site in the EU. Uh, following Rafał, we'll have Derkian Bass, founder of Smart for Aviation, an aviation veteran who spent all his life in aviation, working the Royal Netherlands Air Force, Air Traffic Control Department for six years as an ATM specialist, joined Martinair in 1986 and spent almost 25 years in airline operations working at the OCC crew and dispatch department, founded the, who founded the Smart for Aviation company in 2010. Uh, they will be talking about the new challenges for aviation industry leaders during the pandemic. So, in the final words, I wish you all a great conference and over to you guys. Okay, now I hope you can hear me. And okay, good. Good morning, everybody. And uh, first of all, thank you for, for inviting me to this, uh, what sounds to be extremely interesting and right on time uh, uh, endeavor. Uh, we met with Derek yesterday, and in fact, we discussed that truly we spent a couple of years in the industry. I, I wouldn't dare to say, and thank you, Wojciech, for this cool introduction. I'm, I'm far away from, from quoting myself an aviation veteran, while in fact, yes, I, I, am, I am with the industry, aviation and, and related fields, more from the perspective of navigation and digital business since almost 30 years and obviously uh, uh, I, I would like to use this opportunity to a little bit reflect maybe less on the contemporary trends and technologies but more or, or of some unifying terms and lessons learned from last couple of maybe two years that would be probably the perspective I would like to, to tackle and uh, obviously uh, since March, mid of March, uh, Boeing in, in, in Poland and Boeing as a company across the globe was subject to the same 
pressure and and same impacts and same disruption as most of the companies uh, or all companies in the world and and we were in this together however uh two two facts that are probably important to to note here is that uh, boeing already came into the covid pandemia heavily heavily disrupted and heavily uh um, damaged because of the max grounding that occurred in march 2019 the company at least one good year before the pandemic started was under huge pressure of 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 financial reputational and other uh, disruptions in a way i dare to say we were a little bit better prepared than the others because we already were living into the crisis management mode since uh over a year secondly and that was very practical lesson learned is the fact uh, as an international or, or global company we operate uh, in in many geographies and that includes china and actually what happened in january uh, this year in china we were kind of immediately being uh, reported and and asked to adopt to all the lessons learned from our leaders leadership in china where we were working remotely uh, and sending people home already in january and also seeing all this aspect of of importance of uh what we call today hygienic behaviors they sound obvious but guys i i, I mean we all remember we were not washing hands 70 times an hour in january 2020 and more importantly it was really about the, the the people so as you know the crisis started during the chinese new year and this is when traditionally uh, people are traveling to their to their homes to their families so our biggest challenge actually was to identify where our people are and uh, that kind of translated into how we started to prepare for the for the for the covid uh, eruption both from the infrastructure perspective as well as from organizational perspective and i think the 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 the, the kind of path we followed is strictly aviation path so so we most of you are familiar with the aviate navigate communicate concept and i think we clearly followed this path uh, uh, from the leadership perspective we we took the lessons learned from the from the aviation uh, uh, practice and actually we focused on first on aviating first of making sure that our operations will will be uninterrupted that will be able to provide service to our customers making sure that our employees are safe so this is kind of the uh, kind of the trade off we had to solve and obviously like many we 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 started 100% working remotely mid march the nature of our work requires uh, a constant deliveries i'm uh, sure when it will be turned for honorata later today i guess she has her intervention uh she will disclose some of the aspects of this essence of our work when working with airlines and clearly uh the first weeks were, were not about strategic consideration and product development uh, it was really about staying relevant staying alive so aviate component was important but surely enough we had to understand that we operate in the global um, uh, global network of, of companies not only inside of boeing corporation but also more globally our stakeholder network is actually covering airlines uh, operators military it was interesting to see that that we were both able to to kind of sustain the required uh, level of service but we actually were able to develop new type of services during especially during the first weeks of of pandemia and clearly we were having some uh, additional capacity because we seen drop in demand in some of our service dramatically as the airline traffic dropped dramatically but a couple of examples where we used our software uh, software developers for crew planning uh to work with the hospital in getteborg for their 
rostering of nurses and, and doctors in the peak of the pandemia uh, flow of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the patients. Where we supported from here, from Gdańsk, we supported air, air forces across the world for flight planning of destinations they never normally commuted because of the need to bring uh, masks and, and, and sanitizers and some other uh, medicine equipment from places and to places we normally not operate. We also supported a lot in their fly home uh, campaign. And ultimately, it's how we started to make sure that we stay a company. Because for me, a company is, is not a building balance sheet and, and products. I truly believe that company it's, is pretty much the emanation of intellectual capital of people working for the one. And I think a great dose, even until today, a great dose of our effort as leaders is focused on making sure we stay engaged, we stay productive, and of course, we went through severe disruption as a company, and we, uh, we were forced to restructure. We also had people leaving us, and that was fully understood. Aviation is not the comfort zone any longer. Uh, but I think that is, in a way, a lesson learned not only from business management perspective, but from the kind of empathic leadership perspective. And I, I will summarize, I don't want to steal much time from, from, from Dirk as well as I want really to leave space for, for discussion. I agree with Professor Montrinska when she said that pandemia is, is not really a black swan. We had black swans earlier and pandemia, almost like Kishelewski was referring to the crisis in communist times. This is not a crisis, he said, it's, it's a result. Aviation industry was enjoying an unprecedented boom, both in terms of passenger traffic, aircraft manufacturer deliveries, not necessarily financial health, because it's a tricky business, but still it was, it was making huge money, billions of dollars in revenues and, and, and in profits. So no surprise that the crisis of this nature actually hit this industry so severely. And especially it's hitting the companies that are residing with this, this industry. So for me, really, the, the key takeaway from this, and it's not strictly related to aviation. I think this is the lesson learned for, for, for all business. It's a call for humbleness. It's a call for humility. And Habris is not the, not the way you operate the company. And from like future perspective, so what's behind the corner, I clearly see a lot of benefits of, of the crisis and changing focus. I think the future will bring us interesting opportunities and we are quite well positioned for that. But I will stop here and when the questions will come, I will try to elaborate further on what's behind the corner. Obviously, as Woody Allen said, predicting is very difficult, especially when it comes to the future. But I think we shall be confident once we go through this kind of tactical storm. And unfortunately, this tactical storm is not going away with the numbers that we are seeing every day. But I am absolutely sure that uh, we, will, we will stay strong in front of our future uh, challenges and opportunities. Good morning. Okay, so uh, yeah, good morning, everybody. Um, today, live uh, from my kitchen. Um, 
I see um I see that uh, that you hear me Rafa there. Um yeah, so uh, good morning. Uh, I would uh, also um on behalf of uh, Smart for Aviation and obviously on behalf of myself uh, thank uh, all the uh, participants and uh, um this uh, great idea of uh, setting up this uh, aviation uh, hub. Um um the uh, the um collaboration and uh, and uh, this is the uh, first uh, initiative but uh, i'm uh, looking forward to, uh, i'm looking forward to um yeah um, to to work with, uh, with with all the companies and uh, looking for a uh, yeah um, a great uh, result now and in, uh, in the future i also would like to compliment uh, the team behind uh, what uh, what is going to be shown uh, these uh, days uh, to my opinion, a tremendous job uh, was uh, done in a short, uh, short time. Because when I heard that they were setting up this uh, conference, uh, I don't know, really, um, some short uh, time ago, the, the um, yeah, uh, a lot of respect, uh, a lot of respect from uh, from my side, uh, from my side uh, there. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, so um, so um, yeah, the um, I guess uh, the challenges that uh, Rafael uh, expressed uh, obviously uh, also uh, um, also uh, were ours. Um, Smart for Aviation uh, also went uh, through some uh, hard uh, time and uh, um, hard time. Uh, and when thinking about uh, hard uh, times, uh, hard times uh, like. Uh, like you mentioned, Rafael, it's, uh, we had those hard times uh, before where uh, people uh, were asked uh, to be creative and, uh, and, uh, and, and find solutions in, uh, in a short time for, uh, for problems that came out of the, came out of the blue. Um, um, like, uh, yeah, our team, um, I also am very proud of uh, what, uh, what we did in the past few uh, months, uh, the flexibility. Obviously, uh, as an IT company, um, we have uh, been, um, our people have been working um, from home. Uh, as an IT company, we have uh, facilities or they have uh, um, the um, option to work from, from, from home. So we, we shifted to working from home. Um, obviously, it, uh, it also, um, yeah, it also asked a lot of uh, flexibility of uh, of everybody, and a different uh, approach to to working, um, and also, yeah, how the future will will be. I mean, we're we're, we're trying to find out, um, but it looks like it will be some combination of uh, working from uh, from home and uh, and working uh, from from the offices. But uh, meanwhile, we're still full in this uh, pandemic. Um, I'm living in Amsterdam and the Dutch government has told me to uh, stay at home. I can only go out when necessary. Um, I'm not able even to travel on a train or public transport. So um, the second wave of this uh, pandemic is uh, coming. And uh, yeah, so uh, let's see what the future brings uh, here. Uh, um, this um, I spoke about uh, the um, well, the uh, events uh, we went through in the past, and uh, this is one event um, I went through in uh, nine uh, around <laughs> or nine in this uh, um, in this uh, millennium change, right? So this uh, um, this was the day where we were prepared uh, for uh, where we were prepared for the worst, right? Uh, the uh, computers would go down, and this image. Um, I have uh, saved it, uh, especially because this guy in the left-hand corner is looking very sad. Uh, he's the guy from technical department. Yeah. So uh, what what am I doing here in this uh, amidst of this uh, group of uh, people? Why I'm not at home? But uh, now the whole uh, management of uh, the airline where I was working at that time, uh, Martinair. You can see the management in the back there and in the front. In the front, uh, we've got a chief pilot looking at uh, the. Uh, looking at the uh, results of uh, what is happening in uh, Australia. Yeah, so uh, so uh, do we still have uh, connectivity? Is there any still any computers there? And uh, and uh, yeah, this was uh, some uh, some event where uh, a lot of preparation was done uh, and uh, a lot of things were done ahead. But uh, 
like you said, this kind of uh, events, um, let's call it events, uh, maybe a little bit simple said, but it also drives airlines out of their comfort zone. So, uh, so airlines have to be uh, creative and, 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 and uh, um, make a setup for, for it. And in, in this case, Martin Air, um, they created uh, this uh, emergency room, right? So uh, all emergency facilities, emergency room, and um, yeah, this was uh, also used. Uh, no, for um, this was just preserved for future future use, right? So and also um, some procedures we put in place to do this uh, emergency uh, response. So um, and then uh, obviously next uh, we had this uh, 911 um, crisis where. Um, it came out of the blue, like uh, what we have now with, with this pandemic, which more or less, well, came out of the blue. Yeah, 911. Also, uh, a lot of creativity was uh, was there. Fast response from uh, from uh, different organizations and uh, and and states. And uh, um, I think uh, aircraft were on the ground for 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 some time, but. Uh, um, yeah, also a lot of cre creativity was asked there from the from the from the people. Yeah, to uh, to be able to get the aircraft uh, in the air, and um, yeah, I guess uh, this is uh, this is also what you mentioned, and I think also a part of my story is that uh, when you are uh, when 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 you are under pressure, um, you can be creative, right? So uh, it's uh, um, yeah, being creative at the end of of the month or being creative. Uh, uh, with uh, Christmas or being creative, uh, they're all small things, but they happen. Yeah, so I see it by myself. The most, the when you're under so much pressure, you your create creativity is the best. Um, so um, just a small introduction about uh, smart for aviation. Um, I guess uh, Boeing is a very well known, uh, very well known company. There's not a lot of uh, explanation uh, necessary. Um, but smart for aviation, um, have found that uh, I have found that uh, the company um, we are a mid-sized company. So uh, so uh, in the aviation world, um, obviously you have this uh, no, the bigger companies uh, where, where Boeing is one, and uh, no, there's uh, some other bigger companies. But we are a mid-sized company that is uh, I guess a quite flexible one, um, innovative one. And uh, we're bringing some uh, some really great software on the market, and uh, and uh, the area that we chose for uh, developing it 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 originates uh, it originates from the time that I was working in a Martinair, found myself a Polish partner, and he explained to me what uh, the internet was, and that that's where we started at uh, at the end of the nineties, uh, and in two thousand ten we formed uh, we formed the uh, the uh, uh, smart for uh, smart for aviation, um, but a lot of uh, um, very well uh, trained uh, people, and this is uh, this is also the compliment uh, I'm always uh, making about uh, the the people that are in our company. I um, yeah I call them the uh, Lewandowski's from uh, software development. Yeah, so uh, so uh, we've scored a lot of uh, goals, and uh, as a small company, it makes me a uh, extreme extremely proud to have uh, to have the uh, people in uh, that we have currently in the company um, unfortunately we have uh, grown out, out of the uh, out of the uh, zone where we uh, could go as a family with for a pizza but with this uh, number we have now we still have a, a lot of nice uh, um, sessions and events and it's always a pleasure for me to uh, go to Gdansk or to our other office in uh, in uh, in uh, Krakow. So this is um, some um, this is just some display of uh, of our suite of uh, products. So we are uh, yeah we are a, a company that tries to streamline the processes in the in the airlines, um, replace uh, what was there for years. So uh, so 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 the uh, the aviation industry is a is a very uh, is a very um, um, conservative industry. Uh, I mean, the um, when you see how how progress is uh, done or how um, how little progress is made in the in the industry in the industry, then um, um, it's because of, uh, to my opinion, um, there's a 
Um, obviously, the, um, the whole legislation, um, the whole structure of, uh, of, of aviation where um, some, some, some bigger companies drive and, uh, and uh, um, there's uh, some, 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 some more aspects to why, why it's going so, uh, so uh, slow, uh, like uh, decisions have to be taken by all states. Yeah, so if there are some, 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 some change to be made in a uh, very simple, uh, very simple, the, the, um, the uh, usage of uh, phones and internet in the cabin, it needs all the states to be uh, confirmed that, yeah, so, uh, but also now, like uh, companies uh, like uh, Boeing, so uh, Rafael, uh, I'm still wondering why a cabin attendant is going through the cabin, checking if every person has its uh, seatbelt on, whereas uh, when I'm sitting in my car and I don't have my seatbelt uh, on, there's a, the car says, uh, gives this a sound, right? So uh, put your seatbelt on in order we stop. Uh, it's not that we, it's stopping to drive, but uh, still, <laughs> I mean, this is uh, uh, some, something really weird for me that people go through the cabin and, uh, and find it even, um, I guess uh, they will not always find it or uh, no. So why are the seats in the aircraft not uh, the other way around if it's safety concerned? It's much safer to put them uh, to put to put them uh, in the other way, yeah. So, so there's a there's a yeah there's a, some things that are are, are uh, now for some reason uh, haven't made uh, made uh, progress. Um, but on uh, on our side, we we like to uh, improve uh, processes. We try to also have some uh, balance between uh, people from the uh, obviously this uh, great IT uh, team. But also um, our subject matter experts. So uh, and uh, yeah, although I'm uh, out of the uh, out of the airline for uh, for about uh, ten years now, I still uh, follow what's going on in the industry. And 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 yeah, so I'd like to. Uh, this is uh, the biggest fun for me to uh, replace uh, what is uh, there for years and uh, and uh, see how we can uh, improve and uh, take the industry uh, forward. Um, yeah, so um, what uh, the aviation, um, what we have seen in the aviation um, that the, um, obviously all the uh, flights were broken up by, um, by the pandemic, by uh, this uh, uh, disease. Um, some airlines, uh, some airlines uh, were uh, very creative and started to uh, started to, to use uh, empty legs for uh, flying uh, cargo instead of uh, passengers. And after that, um, some airlines uh, transformed uh, their aircraft to, uh, to uh, let's say, full, full cargo aircraft just to, to make up for the uh, loss of uh, income uh, they had. So the, uh, the biggest problem for the airlines was to, um, for the airline leaders, for the airlines was uh, all this uncertainty. And uh, this is still, uh, ongoing right so we were uh, there's uncertainty with this uh, disease there's a uh, uh, although a, a lot of a lot of um, a lot of uh, reports are made and so on i don't know how it is in poland but when i look to dutch tv dutch television every evening every evening there's uh, talks about uh, about uh, this uh, covid but we get experts and the experts don't agree so uh, it makes it really uh, hard for us in Holland, and we've got um, we've got some special mentality. So uh, we have a special mentality in Holland where we say, um, um, if uh, if uh, uh, if somebody would ask uh, a person from from I would say, mm, let's say uh, Poland or Germany, so so. Uh, can you jump? Make a jump? Then, uh, then somebody there would say, "How high, right?" And uh, and and uh, like if you would ask it to somebody from Holland, we would say, "Why do you want to make me jump, right?" Because this is uh, now. So we've got uh, a lot of uh, yeah. So so uh, um, a lot of uh, uh, people um, distrust what is uh, what our government is saying and so on. And uh, this is also. Uh, making it difficult here to implement uh, to implement uh, procedures. Yeah, I have to be faster because I'm always too long in talking. This is uh, one. Sorry for that, but uh, no, this is uh, some image. Uh, what is uh, I'm just giving an overview of what uh, 
what the industry is facing, obviously a billions in losses and uh, um, yeah, the airlines are looking for all kind of funding or, uh, or, um, or um, yeah, so, you know, selling aircraft, getting funding from the, uh, from the so there's a uh, the strafe to survive. So how is the aviation uh, world uh, surviving? Um, I can say from my company, I can say from my company, we're, we're extremely proud that, um, that obviously uh, a lot of flexibility, a lot of flexibility from the from the people in the company on one side. So uh, they started to work some hours less. Um, we have maintained the majority of the people in the company. So that's, to my opinion, really great. Um, and uh, but also looking at airlines. So what they are doing, like I said, finding new capital, selling off uh, of uh, planes, but also um, but also they are finding, uh, I'm looking at the newspaper. I'm looking at the newspaper and in the bottom here that the airlines are looking for new opportunities. So uh, for example, uh, Wizard Air uh, announced that they will start flying in the Norway or uh, the former director of Bratton Safe. Uh, he is also uh, saying that they want to found a new airline in, uh, in uh, Norway. Um, Cebu Pacific Air is investing in in equipment, in uh, there's um, on one side you see the pandemic. On the other side, there's also airlines that are really looking for opportunities. So um, going forward with the um, pandemic, there's a uh, um, we see uh, the uh, way forward. There's two components. Uh, obviously, the the governments uh, must uh, lift the uh, lift the borders again. Um, so uh, even I cannot go uh, two weeks ago, I was in Berlin uh, just for fun and uh, looking at some street art uh, over there. Uh, now I'm just uh, confined in my prison here in uh, Holland, right? So I hope that my fellow citizens, uh, the uh, Dutch uh, finally see that it's better to uh, start and work on this uh, pandemic and start uh, adhering to the measures. Uh, because uh, yeah, I love I love to travel. The uh, governments uh, they have to uh, allow passengers to travel between countries. Obviously, uh, the passengers need to have the confidence that they uh, can travel uh, somehow safely, right? And there, are, uh, all those measures. I guess uh, everybody knows about it that all those measures have been uh, have been taken. So it's a more or less some layered principle there. Uh, and uh, yeah, the uh, where um, where um, everybody was looking at some uh, vaccine, I think uh, this was the drive at the beginning. It was quite strange that uh, the media and everybody made us uh, focus on uh, on vaccine, whereas now the um, focus is on testing. At least from the, from aviation, from IATA, um, they have uh, several reports what the value is of those reports can be questioned, obviously. But yeah, they say uh, their statement is that um, their statement is that uh, the uh, chance to, that you get infected on a flight is uh, not the same as uh, being struck uh, by lightning, right? So they're, uh, they see that, uh, that there is, uh, yeah, the chance that you get infected is very low. Um, it was compared to the figures we were compared by, uh, for example, in the trains. Um, it's uh, so it seems to be um, the infection rate in trains is higher than on planes. So they're figuring out what, what is this image is uh, something that came in this morning. So uh, they uh, had an image before about this 88%, but now this, uh, this is more or less the position of uh, IATA. So they want to have this fast test within 20 minutes so they can comply with that with the current test that's uh, about 15 minutes so this is what they are pushing to the uh, states right um, to, uh, to the states and obviously also the, the the passengers to open the borders I don't know if states are uh, uh, well what I see currently is that uh, for example in Holland our uh, uh, our government is still uh, very much busy with uh, their own uh, problems but I hope that in the near future that we can work towards this. And I, I, I really think that this testing, even uh, yeah, some instant test would, uh, would bring us the relief that we are all are looking uh, for. 
So, uh, yeah, we had it about, uh, we spoke about, uh, or I spoke about this, uh, what uh, can uh, happen when you have this, uh, when you have this uh, crisis, yeah. So, uh, at the end of the month, there's uh, the bucket, uh, the, the, the bucket is almost empty, yeah. And uh, people can get uh, creative. So, uh, what are we going to do in the last days of the, of the month? Yeah, so, uh, so airlines, uh, airlines, uh, what can they do? And uh, and uh, um, so they, um, I'm sure that airlines uh, airlines uh, do not know. Uh, a lot of airlines uh, are uh, are able to even make savings with what they have in house now. Yeah, for example, uh, looking at the data. Yeah, so uh, data. Airlines are sitting on a big pile of data, and they have no idea uh, that is there. Yeah, so I can give you the examples like. An airline is flying to some, some small island. There's no fuel truck. Uh, there will be a delay of a couple of hours because there's a problem with the fueling or the fuel truck broke down. Uh, the aircraft returns to his home base. And next week, the same flight is there and nobody did something with this uh, data, right? Whereas uh, if they did something, put more fuel in the aircraft for the return flight, they could have prevented a two hours uh, hour of delay. Yeah, it's some simple examples. And there's a lot of things uh, there. Uh, so uh, airlines can look at their infrastructure. So um, do, we, uh, do we want to go to cloud? They can, well, if there's some money to invest, they can come out better when they invest in technology. Like I said before, the aviation world has a very old, uh, very old, uh, it's a very, has a lot of, uh, yeah, let's say uh, old systems in place. Why are we still communicating on the AFTN telex? So this is, uh, this is some telex from the 50s, yes? Why, why is it still in place? Why can we not get North Atlantic tracks on the medium of, of today, right? Why is, it, uh, why is it that we still have to communicate over uh, telex networks, yeah? So, uh, so uh, where, we have, uh, where we can connect everybody to, uh, to some, uh, no, some, some, some system, yeah? So uh, my belief is that airlines will move to a centralized control, at least, uh, uh, do more in house, and uh, and uh, and the other is a uh, and data data communication is a uh, is a way forward. Yeah, I have to. Uh, sorry, guys, I will accelerate a bit. Um, so, if it comes to communication, uh, smartphone aviation offers a, a common platform. We've done this uh, from the beginning. Uh, our platforms, our software is uh, used by everybody in the airline. I think this is a uh, very important breakdown silos in the uh, in the airlines because uh, no, the these uh, uh, systems uh, were for operations were originally built for people that are mm, working in the uh, OCC or in the in the movement control or, or whatever. But uh, these kind of systems should be used by everybody in the uh, in the airline. So, and I'm. I'm looking to uh, not only use it in the airline, but uh, this is the way forward for aviation to share all the data, to share all the data between uh, the stakeholders. Yeah. So, uh, so, and, and what we are doing, what we are doing with this hub, with this aviation hub, is really great. And this is what I'm looking forward to get out of it, is to look, uh, to talk with the manufacturer, to to talk with people from the airport, and to see to get this a uh, common. This common goal and common uh, and a common way forward, and not uh, in uh, also in a, in a, in, a, in a, no, every stakeholder on on its own. I think sharing information, sharing data, is uh, is a way forward in uh, in aviation. So um, this is the example of uh, sharing data, weather data. Yeah. So uh, in airports, weather data is uh, shared, weather data is shared on a briefing in the morning or in the afternoon or uh, once a day. Uh, it could be continuously. So uh, exception-based operational control. Alert the people in the hangar that there is a thunderstorm coming. So they have to stay inside or uh, there's an aircraft on the ground or uh, um, there will be a wind blowing or uh, no, some uh, whatever in the uh, fog, right? Uh, we've seen that over there sometimes. So uh, sharing the weather information uh, on a platform, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> then uh, last uh, but not least, yeah, I would like to just uh, show our load control system. Um, we will have uh, we'll have some uh, more information, uh, I think, uh, later. 
uh, in one of the presentations, but they were very proud that we are able to, uh, uh, and this was a, a boost for us uh, as a company that two, two, two months ago, we were still able to sign two companies to this uh, product. So to do uh, exception-based operational control, load control for, for, for airlines on a central place in the airline. So um, um, this, is the, this is the way forward, yeah. So we found uh, this uh, communication and alerting that we are doing in this uh, system is very much appreciated by companies and, uh, and, and simple, it is uh, replacing the, uh, uh, for example, activities by a load, con load control department on the airport or a handling agent. Um, I hope you're not bored already, uh, Rafael. So I will switch off for the uh, <laughs> switch off what I'm saying here. But um, it's about the savings where um, um, airlines pay fifty dollars per load sheet just to deliver it to the aircraft, right? And uh, and it, it it can be a huge amount of money that they can save with uh, with such such uh, such programs. Um, the uh, I mentioned before the, the flying of uh, cargo on the upper deck. Also, uh, our customer Air Canada started to do that. The response was uh, done and ready in the two weeks. So they had two weeks of, uh, of uh, creating the way forward with, uh, with our government uh, and also um, showing uh, in our system uh, how to make uh, all the, uh, all the uh, calculations there. Um, so this is a, uh, well, so sorry for my defect. Uh, I get excited when I talk about uh, aviation and options, and uh, um, I've got a lot more things uh, at my heart. But I think uh, the discussion is yours, uh, Rafael, and uh, I guess uh, I guess uh, you can throw in your uh, bone and uh, let's uh, talk about uh, let's talk about uh, some uh, aviation related uh, items there. Thank you very much. Okay, there is a question to DJ and Rafael. Uh, what would you recommend for IT vendor on how to support airlines nowadays? So uh, Nazim, can you unmute Rafael and DJ, please? Um, I guess now I'm unmuted, okay? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear yes, you. Good. So let me elaborate it slightly broader. Uh, that's a great provocative question. I think uh, the consequence of, of pandemia crisis and then the follow up with the industry crisis, as I said, creates opportunities. And before I answer the question of what, what is there for IT and kind of tackle a little bit of what they, uh, DJ was talking about, uh, there are, new opportunities for airlines and industry and just yesterday we have seen this takeoff of Qantas flight to nowhere so actually they're offering 787 flights over Australia from Sydney to Sydney because the country is locked down and people are buying tickets to fly a couple of hours over the country to see the beauty of landscapes of Australia and then they return to the airport of origin so something that would be unfortable or unpresentable before the crisis, now it's occurring. And I think that's actually part of the answer number one to both IT and aviation industry, diversification. I think the, the, the one of the three new paradigms for the time to come will be diversity, diversification of your portfolio, emergence of new products, new services based on existing capability, because we, we have hundreds, if not thousands of people working in software development, data, et cetera, uh, and, and engineering uh, fields uh, and so on. I think this, this is intellectual capital. We, we have to find the way to employ, to further diversify companies and really innovate. So this is where we are coming into, into the, 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 the strategic directions for the companies including the future decisions and i think that's number one number two is purely digital application so clearly for it companies the digital technologies the subject technologies will help at a minimum tactical level 
to, to increase the confidence of travel. And that will namely be around the touchless applications, elimination of unnecessary uh, human contacts, uh, improvement of boarding procedures. And DJ, you referred to luggage uh, management, et cetera. So this is where I believe we have some solutions, but more importantly, we can work on the solutions like helping elimination of the queues in the security area and so on and so forth. So there are plenty of ideas, plenty of prototypes. Unfortunately, aviation industry, not only airlines, not only manuf mainframe manufacturers, but also institutions, administration, airports, they are kind of lagging behind and they are extremely slow on adaptation, which also creates an opportunity for, for, for growth. And ultimately, this is actually what is on top of Boeing agenda for strategic change in the company. And I think this time of slowed down traffic will help us a lot. That's sustainability agenda. And sustainability agenda with the focus on, especially on the environmental piece of this, uh, both from the way how the aircrafts are being designed, how they operate uh, from, the, from the CO2 emission uh, lim limitation perspective, new, new, new sources of, of, of energy as recently disclosed by this one company from Toulouse, that competes with us. And, and ultimately this is, this is really about uh, how aviation will change and potentially will, will, will turn around the whole, the whole business model or a lot of the business model for the benefit of its own, but more importantly for the benefit of, of, of people and, and the planet. Okay, thank you, Rafał. Uh, Dirk, over to you. Yeah, so um, from my point of view, um, smartphone aviation can assist and help uh, the airlines um, um, looking at uh, how to be uh, lean and uh, where to uh, to make the uh, the improvements in the in the, in, the, in the current processes. As an IT vendor. Uh, like I mentioned uh, before, um, we are in a very, um, we are, our en en environment is a very conservative one. And uh, um, airlines have been focused on uh, selling tickets as their main, uh, their, their main competence, right? And, uh, and uh, moving, uh, moving uh, connectivity, moving connectivity to, to passengers. Uh, it passengers uh, and uh, after that uh, connectivity was moved uh, to a cabin and now we are looking at uh, e-connected aircraft it's one of the challenges that uh, i think is very uh, very interesting and also in combination with uh, what uh, manufacturers are, are going to do for me the question is uh, what's going to end up in the aircraft and uh, what is still going to be on an efb on a tablet uh, the thing that has uh, taken a, a big uh, leap uh, past the years uh, but to my opinion it will end up in a different way because uh, i think uh, boeing will incorporate a lot of things in their aircraft uh, in the future that are now on this uh, on this uh, on this uh, on this tablet um and also um i hope that uh, these uh, leaders uh see the uh, time that they have now to regroup to re uh, rework and uh, maybe the best for them is to think that uh, like me today, I'm sitting in the kitchen of my house. So how to run an airline from the kitchen of your house, right? Do we need really uh, all this uh, CETA communication? Oh, sorry, I shouldn't say that. Do we all need all this communication? Do we need, uh, can we do it in another way? Can we start using the means that we have nowadays? So this is, uh, this is I think, uh, a way forward. Start uh, to use data communication instead of voice like uh, air traffic control. Um, air traffic control will not be able to sustain this uh, voice communication because all the frequencies are full. So, so uh, we should look at uh, this area as where uh, data, uh, data is going to be used, data exchange between ground and aircraft, data between people in the company. Uh, there's a lot of savings, uh, savings there to be, to, to be done. And uh, yeah, we are uh, we're really looking forward to help airlines in that. Okay, thank you so much, Dirk, for uh, for your answer. 
uh, we are a little bit past time, but I have one more question. Um, Rafa, you mentioned the use of crew management apps in Gothenburg Hospital Medical Workers Management. Uh, could you elaborate on this? Did the hospital turn to Boeing? How did it happen? It sounds like an awesome flexibility of the company. Okay, so uh, basically there were some personal relations between the management of our Gothenburg office with the local local hospital and when they, for whatever experience reason, realized that they are unable to uh, roster and pair, I mean, mostly roster, because there's no pairing in hospital, I believe. Uh, so so th this, is, this is simply where we realized that we have uh, this software that we both use for uh, uh, airlines as well as some of the railways. Uh, it, it took pretty much, you know, in our agile environment, not much time to turn this capability and at least create uh, some solution that helped optimize the use and then fatigue management because they're both, both sides, this is when the people work and this is when the people have time to rest and how we manage the fatigue of the people, uh, which is pretty much same critical as in aircraft as it is in the, in the hospital. And there are, there are more news available publicly about that. I, I will make sure that we'll send it through our invest, our aviation hub uh, channel for those interested. Okay, thank you so much, Rafa, for the answer. And once again, uh, Rafa and Dirk, thank you for, uh, for this presentation.